used to be a Catholic and then became a Protestant. This war would never have been possible without the sinister influence of the Jesuits. We owe it to popery that we now see our land reddened with the blood of our noblest sons. Abraham Lincoln, 1865, 16th President of the United States, Lincoln's private letters that were burnt by his son Robert, restated by Charles Chinicky, who was the personal confidant of the President. In a letter dated 22 January 1870, Massini wrote to Pike. Now, Albert Pike is this high mason who wrote this, the manual, if you like, of Scottish Freemasonry. He said the following, We must allow all of the federations to continue just as they are. It must appear as things are as they were in the beginning. With their systems, their central authorities, and diverse modes of correspondence between high grades of the same right, organized as they are at present, but we must create a super right, which will remain unknown, to which we will call those masons of high degree whom we shall select. With regard to our brothers in masonry, these men must be pledged to the strictest secrecy, through this supreme right, we will govern all Freemasonry, which will become the one international center, the more powerful, because its direction will be unknown. Now, Albert Pike wrote a letter to Mancini, and that was dated August 15, 1871, in which he propagated that there should be a world order, a one order where all nations are under the control of one central organization. And in order to achieve this, they plan the First World War to overthrow the power of the Tsars in Russia, protector of orthodoxy, and bring about an atheistic communistic state. Did that happen? The Second World War, that's also written long before the event, to originate between Great Britain and Germany to strengthen communism as, as antithesis to the Judea Christian culture, and bring about a Zionist state in Israel. Did it achieve this objective? Yes. In fact, after this war, Israel, in its present form, was reinstated under the protection of Britain. And then, interestingly enough, a Third World War, a Middle Eastern war involving, involving Judaism and Islam, and spreading internationally. Well, here's another quote. Uh, just in case people don't like that quote, Massini with Pike developed a plan for three world wars so that eventually every nation would be willing to surrender its national sovereignty to a, to a world government. The first war was to end the Tsarist regime in Russia, the second to allow the Soviet Union to control Europe, the third world war was to be in the Middle East between Muslim and Jews and would result in Armageddon. Interesting. Now, how were they going to do it? Let's read what Albert Pike wrote about these wars and uh, how they were going to be uh, unleashed. He wrote, quote, We shall unleash the nihilist and the atheist, so the destroyer and the atheist, and we will provoke a formidable social cataclysm which in its horror will show clearly to the nations the effect of absolute atheism origin of savagery and the most bloody turmoil. Then everywhere the citizens obliged to defend themselves against the minority of revolutionaries will exterminate these destroyers of civilization and the multitude disillusioned with Christianity will receive the pure light through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer. The destruction of Christianity and atheism both conquered and exterminated at the same time. Wow, what a clever plan. So you rub the two systems which you create up against the other. You create atheism as an antithesis to the Judeo-Christian culture. You have these two clash until they rub each other up. And then out of that, you will get a new world order where you have a new religion, which is far more esoteric and actually honors Satan. Isn't that a rather clever plan? Well, it's very successful. That is why Ordo Ab Kao, Ordo Ab Kao is the, the verse, if you like, that uh, Freemasonry uses. This is one of their documents, remember, that I photographed in a Masonic lodge. 
And Weishaupt is the father of Jacobinism. You will remember that we spoke about that in Revelation chapter 11. And Jacobinism was the power that propagated the French Revolution. And we did this in Re Revelation chapter 11, where the Bastille was stormed, liberty leading, the goddess of reason was enthroned instead of Christianity. So Christianity was removed and another reign began. Uh, the monarchy was deposed and Louis and his wife lost their heads, the beheading of Marie Antoinette, and that put an end to that monarchy. Then Robespierre, he headed the Jacobin clubs, and a reign of terror commenced, which in its bloodshed and its violence rivals anything that we have seen to date. Uh, the great philosopher, if you like, of the French Revolution was Voltaire. Now you can look it up in any Encyclopedia Britannica. They will tell you who Voltaire was. He was a Jesuit. They will say, of course, he was a renegade Jesuit that left the Roman Catholic Church to write against it. No, no, no. He was just playing the role perfectly because they were setting up an antithesis. Do you remember the promise that a Jesuit makes that I will take either side and do it perfectly as long as in the end the mother church wins? Or the social contract man is born free and everywhere he's in chains. One man thinks himself the master of others but remains more of a slave than they are. That's true. But what if you created the slavery in order to create the misery in order to create the revolution? Isn't that possible? Albert Pike was one of the most colorful characters in American history. It is said that he was born on December 29, 1809 in Boston, was the eldest son of uh, six children born to Benjamin, Sarah, Andrew Pike. He studied at Harvard and later served as Brigadier General of the Confederate Army. After the Civil War, Pike was found guilty of treason and jailed, only to be pardoned by President Andrew Jackson on April 2nd, 1866, who met with him the next day at the White House. On June 20th, 1867, Scottish Rite officials conferred upon Johnson a 32nd degree masonry, Freemasonry degrees. Pike was said to be a genius, able to read and write 16 languages. He was one of the founding fathers of the head of the ancient accepted Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, being the Grand Commander of North America Freemasonry from 1859 and retained that position until his death in 1891. In 1869, he was the top leader of the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan. spirit out of the people of God, basically, the, the prosperity gospel and the hyper grace gospel, all this mess that we've been dealing with, they have decimated the people of, of, of God. And, and they have literally just sucked the warrior spirit right out of them where they don't want to fight. They're, right. They don't want to get out of their comfort zone. Right. And it, this is where God is, is testing people right now. Are you going to fight for what I gave you? I've already given it to you. I just need you to take it. Exactly. Sometimes it's a, sometimes it's, it's 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 a fight to get to God's hand to take what He's given us out of His hand. You know what right. I mean? He's like He's there. Hey, here it is. Come take it. I mean, the enemy's just not going to let you walk up there and take it, guys. You, you know what I mean? He's, we have to fight for stuff, and right. that that's the part that uh, this apology tour that bothers me because you've had two articles come out now slamming people. And by the way. Any prophecy now to do with Trump has now been labeled the Trump prophecies. That's, a, I'm sure, a shot at, across my bow because that just happens to be the title of the book. Yep. And so uh, we're getting all lumped together now in this. And so these articles that are coming out demanding an apology, saying that they're doing damage to the body of Christ, it's like, no, time out, guys. You, those guys are the ones doing damage, demanding an apology because you're telling people to not stand up and fight. And that's the hard part. That's the part that's hard to take anymore. It's, and, you, you know, you had Franklin Graham up there wanting Trump and Biden to meet in the White House, and he was going to uh, mediate or whatever this was with the, with the two first ladies and them. It's like, seriously, you're going to try and usher in the New World Order, an evil man, a Biden, and you're going to tell people we need to pray for those in authority over us, such as Biden, who's a false president? Yeah. It shouldn't be there. 
I'm sorry. It, it, it's wrong. People can get mad all they want to. It, it's like you are literally trying to usher into the White House pure evil, and you're kicking out a man of righteousness. I don't care what people think of Donald Trump. The man stands for righteousness, period. I, if you agree with him, you don't agree with him, you like him or you don't like him. I don't care. He was God's chosen vessel for this time, and he stands for righteousness and light. This man's done more than most all the pastors in America put together have done in a hundred years you know what I mean I mean it's like give me a break what part of this do you not understand or you don't see these pastors and it's like again why is he trying to usher in pure evil into the White House that's the part that damages the body of Christ right there they're, um, they're you know they're moving true church it doesn't exist anywhere today except in small pockets of individuals who meet with each other in Christ's name. All of these organized religions have bastardized the teachings of Christ, have corrupted the teachings of Jesus, and most of them are helping to lead you into slavery in the New World Order. In those days, great signs and wonders were performed as God confirmed His Word with signs following true Christianity, ladies and gentlemen, anointed by the Holy Spirit, swept the world like a prairie fire. Nothing could stop it. No matter how many Christians the emperor crucified, no matter how many Christians were thrown to the animals in the Roman circus, one hundredfold sprang up to take their place. This movement encircled the mountains and crossed the oceans. It made kings tremble and tyrants fearful. And it was said of those early Christians that they had turned the world literally upside down. So powerful was their message and spirit. Now, I am talking about the true Christian teachings of Jesus Christ and the way that it was followed in the early days of Christ's church, not Rome's church, not Baptist church, not Lutheran's church, not Orthodox church, 